What's up everybody? This is Jordan Nelson, aka DJ Phase with idjnow.com, and I'm here today to teach you guys a little bit about DMX 512. DMX is a way that any mobile entertainer, from DJs to bands and everyone in between, can control their lighting and use it to its full potential. Learning DMX is something that can be kind of confusing or overwhelming at times. There's so much information out there and it seems extremely technical and confusing, but hopefully by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to pick up your lights, pick up your DMX controller and create awesome light shows. So before we get started with learning how DMX works, we need to learn a little bit about what it is. Before DMX was a thing, lighting control was much more complicated and hard to do. If you wanted to control your lighting, let's say in a theater, you would have to run a power cable from your DMX board up to the stage, up to the light that you were gonna control, and you would only have control over maybe its brightness, right? It was all done with one wire per light, and it was a big, bulky, inefficient mess. With time, people developed the first computerized controllers, which eliminated the need to have 20 cables for your lights, instead slim things down to one that would send a control signal to some box or dimmer pack on the stage, which would adjust the light's attributes without needing to have a big tangle of cables for every individual light. This still wasn't as efficient as it could have been. Each manufacturer of lights and of controllers had a proprietary uh, signal or proprietary code that they would use for their lighting control. So if you had lights of this manufacturer and a controller of this manufacturer, unless they were compatible, you couldn't use them. Let's say you wanted to add some lights to your show or maybe switch manufacturers because you liked the products from a different uh, company, you'd be out of luck. You'd have to completely replace everything or replace your lighting controller. But eventually DMX 512 was developed as a standardized protocol for controlling lights. Now you can take lights from any company, Chauvet, American DJ, Alation, you name it, and control them all using the same DMX 512 language. And it also doesn't matter what DMX controller you have, be it a small hardware controller, a software program that's from China, from the US, it doesn't matter, they all function using the same DMX 512 language. So what is the DMX 512 language? Well, there's a really jargon-filled definition that you can find on Wikipedia that basically says that DMX 512 is a multi-drop bus topology with nodes strung in a daisy chain. That probably means nothing to you. Let me give it to you in plain English. Basically what this says is that now, using DMX 512, your controller will take one cable, which you'll plug into your first light, and it will send a packet of information. That light will know how to decode that information, know what instructions are meant specifically for that light. Then it will pass the whole signal through a cable out of that light to the next light in a daisy chain, and that light will know what to decode for that specific fixture. This will continue on and on down your chain in one daisy chain, eliminating the need for a cable from your controller to each individual light. It really has simplified things and it makes our life uh, as mobile entertainers much easier. The second part of the name is the number 512. 512 channels equals one DMX universe. A DMX universe is the entirety, let's say, of your light show as a mobile DJ. The 512 means that there are 512 individual channels or properties that you can control in a light show. What I mean by that is let's say that you have a standard uh, wash light. This is like a PAR can style light that has a red, green, and a blue diode. If you wanted to control the red color, the amount of red that you're using in that light, that would be one DMX channel. Let's say you wanted to mix a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. That would be two DMX channels. Some lights are super simple and can have as little as three or four channels. Some moving heads and more complicated lighting effects can have upwards of 20 or 30. Again, one DMX universe is 512 channels, so you can imagine that depending on how complicated your lights are, you can fit a lot of lights within one DMX universe. So why do we as mobile entertainers even care about DMX control? The biggest reason is that it allows us to add variety and reduce the monotony in our light shows. If you're just plugging in your lights on sound active or auto mode, they may look interesting for a few minutes, maybe even 10 or 15 minutes, but eventually those programs are going to repeat themselves. If you're a client that's at your event for three hours, they're gonna notice that things are the same, that there's no variety, and that can get boring, and we never wanna make our clients bored. The other reason that we like DMX Control as mobile entertainers is because it allows us to create more effects with less lighting. 
For example, if you're doing a school dance and you want to have black light effects during one portion of the night and you want to use a strobe during your big high energy moments and then you want to have a color wash for all of the times in between, you may need three different lights, a wash light, a black light, and a strobe light. With DMX, you can use certain fixtures that have black light diodes, white diodes, and color diodes and create those individual effects at the touch of a button without having to buy multiple lights. So DMX gives you access to all of the features that your lights may have. The final reason that we use DMX and probably the most important is because it allows us to create emotion uh, and ambiance during specific moments of our events. For me, there's nothing more powerful than a first dance at a wedding ending or a parent dance. And right as the song ends, I drop into my next song and I can flick on a switch on my DMX lights and I instantly switch to party mode uh, and I created an atmosphere instantaneously that's more conducive to getting my guests to dance. If you're doing a, a school dance with DMX control at the touch of a button, you suddenly have a slow dance atmosphere and when the song is over, at another touch of a button, you're back into party mode. You're not having to unplug fixtures, click buttons on the back of the light. It's all done on a DMX controller and it really makes our lives easier and allows us to sell more services to our clients. So now that we know a little bit about what DMX is, let's imagine we're gonna go out and buy some lights. Whether you already own some DMX capable lights or you're looking to purchase some, these are a few things to keep in mind. Every light that you buy will have various channel modes. Channel modes are the amount of DMX channels that you want to control in your light. If we think about that PAR can I imagined earlier with the red, green, and blue diodes, the simplest channel mode that this light might have would be a three channel mode. A three channel mode would allow you to adjust the brightness of the red, the green, and the blue diodes individually. That's a really basic light. Maybe the light has a four channel mode as well. A four channel mode allows you to control red, green, and blue, and also the dimmer that controls all of the colors at once. The light might also have a five channel mode, which would add a strobe channel. So in addition to red, green, and blue, a master dimmer, you're also gonna be able to control how fast the light flashes. You can look up the channel modes for lights that you're interested in on the manufacturer's website, on idjnow.com, or in the user manual. The reason you care about channel modes is because let's say that you wanna create a very specific effect. One of the reasons people use DMX control is because it allows them to create uh, effects that they normally wouldn't be able to do otherwise. For example, a mirror ball effect. A lot of clients love the look of white dots that move slowly in a circle around the room, but not every fixture can do that effect. There are half dome lights, there are sphere lights, and each one will have different DMX channel modes that you can access. If the DMX channel modes has an option to select a white color and maybe a slow rotation, then that would be a light that you might be interested in because that's an effect that you wanna create for your clients. So keep in mind when you're looking at lights to purchase, what channel modes does the light offer? Can I have a lot of control with a 15 channel mode or am I limited to only a three or a four channel mode? Channel modes are also important to note because some controllers limit how many channels you can control on your lights. If you have a DMX controller already that only allows you to control 16 channels on your light, you wanna make sure that you're getting lights that give you flexibility with a 16 channel mode. So after you've decided on some DMX lights to purchase or you found out that the DMX lights you already own are gonna work for you, you're gonna need some cabling. DMX signal is passed along a cable that looks very similar to an XLR microphone cable. The connectors are the same, the cable's usually the same thickness and diameter, and many DJs will substitute in microphone cables instead of DMX cables. Now there is a scientific difference between a DMX cable and an XLR microphone cable, and it comes down to the cable's impedance. Now I can't get into all of the science because frankly, I don't know it all, but I can say that the more lights you have in your chain, the greater the chance that you will have errors and glitches in your programming if you're using a microphone cable. A lot of DJs can get by with a mic cable for one or two or even three or four lights, but if you're using a lot of lights or you want the utmost stability and confidence that you're not gonna have cable problems, I would suggest that you buy actual DMX lighting cables. They're not expensive, they're very similar in price to any other cable that you could buy, and it will give you the peace of mind knowing that you're using the right equipment 
for the job. Okay, so we're just about ready to go. We've got our lights, we've got the right cables. Now you have to choose what kind of DMX controller that you would like to use. There are two main ways that you can go in regards to a DMX controller, the hardware route, or the software route. Let's take a look at each kind of controller individually. We're gonna start with the hardware DMX controller. Now, a quick side note, if you're purchasing a DMX controller as a mobile entertainer, you're most likely buying one in the range of a couple hundred dollars. When I'm talking about hardware controllers, I'm not talking about the 20 or 30 or $40,000 lighting control desks used by big touring lighting companies. I'm talking about the kind of controller you can grab from IDJ now for a couple hundred dollars that are very commonly available. I've actually got one here with me, so let's put it on the table and we'll take a look at it. All right, so this is a very common, typical hardware DMX controller for a mobile entertainer. This is a Chave Obey 70, although lots of manufacturers offer controllers that look extremely similar to this model, and everything will be laid out mostly the same. So let's talk about the pros of a hardware DMX controller. The biggest one is that they are all-in-one and self-contained. Everything you need is in this little space. It even has these rack mountable holes here if you wanted to stick it in some kind of road case. Another pro of this kind of controller that a lot of people like to cite is they're a lot more stable. You're not depending on a PC, you're just depending on this hardware which means there's one less link in the chain that could fail. These are going to be great for mobile entertainers that are doing really simple lighting, mobile entertainers that are doing ambient lighting or room lighting or venues or catering halls that may need to just do some lighting on the walls or to pin spot certain elements of the room because this is so simple to use. Most people can come in, they don't have to go through a computer program, they can just select uh, the functions they need very easily. Let me show you what is all involved with a controller like this. This set of buttons down here is the fixture bank. You've got 12 buttons here, which means I can control up to 12 lights individually. And this is where we hit one of the first big roadblocks of a hardware controller. You really can run out of fixtures and channels very quickly. This controller can only control 12 lights. If your light show gets bigger than that, you're out of luck and you need to upgrade. So if you're thinking that your light show may grow in the future, you may wanna buy once, cry once, and go a different route. If you think it's gonna be very simple, you're only using 12 kinds of lights, this is gonna be perfect for you. Above the fixture buttons are these sliders. These sliders are the individual DMX channels in your light. By adjusting the slider, you can adjust the intensity or the value of that individual channel. For example, red, green, blue, dimmer, and on and on, depending on your individual light. Now this is another spot where a hardware controller can become limited. There's 14 sliders here on page A, as well as this little joystick, and I can hit this button and go to a second page and do another 14 channels plus the joystick here. So in total, this controller can control 30 channels of control on each light. Again, if you're using a lot of very simple fixtures, 30 channels may be more than enough for you. If you see your company growing and utilizing a lot of DMX control, this might become limited with only 12 fixtures and 30 channels. Above the faders are the scene buttons. This is where you save different lighting programs that you've created, as well as the chases, which are combinations of scenes that you've created. You've got a few other faders here that allow you to control attributes of your light show, such as how fast the lights are fading and how fast they're changing from one color or one program to another and other fun buttons such as a strobe button and a fog machine button and these buttons here which are utilized to program. Now, some of the biggest cons with a controller like this, we've already talked about the limited functionality that you'll get if your light show grows. The other one is the amount of time that it takes to program on a controller like this. This is very intuitive if you need to create simple colors, like I just want a little red and a little green, and I want to create, uh, add a little yellow, and I want it at this brightness right here. That's great if you are a venue or you're just doing some architectural lighting. But if you want to create a really complicated, let's say a movement for your high school dances with your moving headlights, you might have to put your dimmer here, select a color, select a gobo, select uh, a strobe value, or select a shutter, like you know, have the light all the way on or semi-open. And then you'll have to go with your joystick or with these faders and go like, I want the light to be positioned right there. And then you'll have to click save scene. And then you'll have to adjust the position a little bit and save scene. And you'll have to adjust the position a little bit and maybe the color a little bit and then save scene. And once you've got this 
complicated movement created. You can put it in one of your chase buttons and you have one movement. And if you wanna have variety during your light show and you wanna create 10 movements, you can imagine how long that's gonna take. These aren't exactly capable of a lot of finesse and so it might take you a while to get your positions uh, exactly right. So these are very time consuming to program on. For most mobile DJs, I would say that you will spend so much time programming on a hardware controller like this that you may lose interest. You may decide, I'm sick of DMX, I'm gonna go back to doing auto modes. And these can be super discouraging if you're not really dedicated to lighting. So while they have the benefits of being a little more stable without a computer, very solid and contained, which would be perfect for your venue or your catering hall, the better option I think for mobile entertainers is the software route. So let's go take a look over at my computer and I'll show you how a software lighting program works. All right, so this is an example of a lighting program. This specifically is Chavez Show Express. And one of the biggest benefits of a computer lighting program is that everything's done visually, which is very intuitive for us as human beings. You'll notice that as I bring lights into my software, they show up as little pictures off here to the right. I don't need to know what channels control what things like I do with a hardware controller. I don't need to move actual sliders to set things and they may be a little finicky. Everything is done on a screen virtually, which is really handy. If I wanna bring lights into the program, I just click a button that says add fixture and I can look through lights by their manufacturer alphabetically. I don't have to look at the manual to know what channel mode to put it in or how many channels I need to control. The other benefit is that I'm not limited with how many lights I can have. You can see with this, uh, I have the full 512 channels available to me here, and I can stack lights right up against each other. So this first light is using channels 1 to 20, the next light's using channels 21 to 31, and that way no channels are wasted. I can use all 512, not like a hardware controller that will limit the number of fixtures that I can use. Programming is just as easy. I can go into something called the generator right here, select a light, and then I can instantly, let's do, let's do these moving heads right here. So I've got these two Chave moving heads. You'll see the circle appear on the screen. This is the movement. If I wanna change where the light moves, it's as simple as drawing a different picture with this circle. Let's make a figure eight maybe. And we can just kind of drag these little things wherever we want. Right now we've got this weird figure eight looking shape. And all I have to do is drag this where I want it, hit play, and my lights would start following that pattern. It's that simple. This program does all of the DMX channel computations, all of the complex uh, programming by itself, and then just sends the signal out through a little USB dongle to your lights. Now, people cite pros and cons of these fixtures. Uh, the biggest con that most people usually cite is that you're depending on a PC. One, that's gonna be more expensive if you haven't already purchased a laptop. And two, there's one more point that your lighting can fail. If your laptop fails, then you're up a creek. You don't have any lighting control. Computers can be prone to fail, although I personally have never experienced any issues with this software. Apart from the generator, which is the easiest way to program, you have this steps tab over here where you have faders just like you would have on a normal hardware controller. The benefit of the software is above each fader, there's a little picture that'll say X or Y or have a color wheel or maybe a gobo shape. So instead of having to look at your manual and say, okay, I know that channel 12 at value 155 is such and such gobo, I can just click here on the picture and say, I want it to be gobo number three. And you click it and it'll automatically select, oh, you need channel 82. And it will do the DMX programming for you. Again, software has so many more features. It can look a little overwhelming with all of the screens and buttons, but it's very easy to learn and very easy to get the hang of and program on. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick overview on what DMX is, why it's important to us as mobile entertainers, and what equipment you should use to get started with DMX. Now, this is a huge broad topic and it's really tough to cover in one 15 or 20 minute video. So if you're looking for more information, all of the tips and advice that I've given you today are summed up in this book's DMX for Mobile DJs, which I put out on Amazon a few years ago. 
There'll be a link where you can grab a copy for yourself. It goes over everything that we talked about in a lot more detail, as well as having walkthroughs for how to program on different DMX controllers. This has been Jordan Nelson, aka DJ Phase with idjnow.com. And if you're looking for good gear, good lights, good DMX controllers, head on over to our website to pick up everything you need to have a successful mobile entertainment company. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.